Joining me right now with more on trade, with more on the policy coming out of Washington that's going to benefit our economy, we have from North Carolina, member of the Committee on Financial Services, Congressman Robert Pittenger. So good to have you here. Thank you, Representative, for joining the show. Good afternoon. So, what I, I want to start on the Fed here, right? Because the Fed, they're a little pessimistic. They're not so convinced that things are going to be as great as well the White House thinks they're going to be. Uh, where, where do you think it's all going to shake out? Well, I think they're, they're paid to hedge their bets. Uh, I, I think you would expect them to be much more conservative. Uh, where there's a historic basis for these tax cuts and the transformational effect that they're going to have in our economy, and I think the White House, is, is, their analysis is, is on, on target. So mm -hmm. I think we can look forward to a, st a strong and steady growth in the years ahead. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I sometimes think the Fed might want to get out of the way a little bit so that we have that opportunity to have that growth. Uh, sometimes they don't well, realize don't that they could you, be hindering things. They could be, but I think uh, when we've seen the redeployment of assets, uh, the reinvestment back into our economy by major companies, 350 billion here, 50 billion there in North Carolina, we have so many companies here that are uh, reinvesting back in the expansion. I've got uh, some counties that are very poor counties, but they've got some good businesses there and manufacturing, and uh, they're going to be expanding. That's and they, great. The tax and cuts have been an extraordinary doing, amount. It's tax cuts, right? I mean, that's part of yes. why they want to expand here now. That's the tax cuts are having a huge effect, and, and, and of course the the expensing, yeah. and being able to expense uh, their investments. So uh, I think we can be encouraged with what's going to happen. Look what's already happened. Who would have predicted where we are today with the markets, with 401ks, with uh, certainly not the Fed. <laughs> no, not no, they certainly would, they not the Fed. They're they're they're, they're the, uh, certainly surprisingly Wages pessimistic, but the market likes that. Um, let me ask you this. You know, the president's having these meetings right now with union leaders on trade. One of the most remarkable things I think about this administration is its ability to cross over into areas that had been really dominated uh, by the left and by Democrats. And, uh, you know, Richard Trumka's there at that meeting today, and he's had an on and off again um, <clears throat> relationship with the president, positive relationship, occasionally going negative. But for the most part, I think a lot of these union members are very receptive to the idea of America first. What is it that we need to do, Congressman, to be more competitive with the likes of China so we don't run the risk of turning into France while China becomes USA 2.0? Sure. Well, good question. I think the difference in today is you have a president who is a businessman, not a politician. He knows the numbers. He knows reality. He knows what will work. And he can sit down and, and not allow uh, these union folks to just overwhelm him. Mm -hmm. he, he understands what's reasonable, what can be done, what can ensure that American markets are open, that we have fair, free and fair trade with China or with Canada or with uh, Mexico. Uh, I trust the man, his ability to negotiate. And I think uh, all of us would, would be well served if we understood that the uh, president and his U.S. trade representative, Robert Lighthizer, uh, are fully capable. And they understand the timing, they understand the process, and they know exactly where they can move this ball. Congressman, good to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us.